Hello and welcome to today's webinar, uh, moving from 2D to 3D. Um, we're just going to give it another one or two minutes, just wait on two or three more people to jump in so we get started uh, in about 60 seconds. Okay, let's get going with this. So yes, so today's webinar is uh, on from moving from 2D to 3D. So the products we're going to be uh, looking at today is moving from AutoCAD basically to Fusion 360 and how this can be an easy um, process for people that are just have been using uh, AutoCAD for the last couple of years um, or are very, very experienced in AutoCAD and they um, just want to see how easy this process will be moving from 2D to 3D. So again, my own name is Brian Fagan. Um, I'll just jump the slide here for a second minute. So just a little bit about me. So I'm a qualified tool maker, have been in the industry just over 20 years. Um, set up and manage a CNC shop in the past. Uh, I've worked in many roles across many different industries, environment and aerospace, gaining huge experience in all areas of manufacturing. Uh, roles include uh, product engineer, design engineer, manufacturing engineer, product uh, transfer lead, as technical specialist and manager roles uh, over the 20 years, obviously. Um, the Autodesk range that I mainly focus on is Fusion 360, Inventor and AutoCAD. And I'd be Cemetery Ireland's uh, Fusion 360 and CAM expert. So any CAM related issues come my way or any Fusion 360 issues all come my way. I do provide all the training for Fusion 360 in CAM and design elements. <coughs> so. I'm going to keep this uh, webinar fairly um, low level because uh, we have a, a huge amount of uh, attendees here today that um, from all different industries. So I don't want to get too um, deep into Fusion 360 where it would nearly, uh, like any product, can scare people away, I suppose. <clears throat> so if you've been on any of my webinars in the past, you know I don't really like to do PowerPoints. I like to jump in and do live demonstrations so you can see how the product actually functions. You can see the, the errors that I create along the way, um, which is always happens on a live webinar. So, and it's good for everyone to kind of see it, how you, how the, the customer will see the, the product as well, rather than um, just PowerPoints and slides of, of the product. So without further ado, I'm going to jump straight into uh, a live presentation. So what we have here is I was trying to come up with some ideas on what I can showcase here today and uh, to try to cover uh, all different industries um, between architecture and manufacturing. So it's a very hard task to do that. So I just trying to come up with something that we can everyone can kind of relate to. So. Um, I redesigned, or I redesigned, I just drew up my uh, wife's uh, dresser, makeup dresser upstairs. So I'm just going to use that as a very basic example. So this is AutoCAD. Everyone here, uh, I presume, is using AutoCAD as they are on this webinar from 2D to 3D and looking to see how we can move into 3D. So your very basic uh, AutoCAD draw is here. Like AutoCAD, we have our toolbar up at the top. We have our ribbon. We have huge amount of uh, functions within AutoCAD. Uh, we have loads of different tabs. You've got your home, insert, additive, parametric, etc., etc., etc. I'm not here to show you all about AutoCAD. I'm just trying to explain how this can uh, be related to Fusion. So, like that, I'm sure many of you um, probably only use maybe. 15 to 20% of the functions in AutoCAD, and then all the other functions are uh, there for people that may use them from time to time, but very little. So your home tab is the one that most people would probably be 95% uh, using. <coughs> Insert and annotate would be used a little bit, and after that, then the odd time, all these other uh, ribbons would be used. So again, if you're brand new to AutoCAD, you would jump into this and be thinking, my lord, this is fairly confusing. There's a huge amount of functions, but like that, when you start using it, you're only using 10 or 15, 20% of the functions. The rest of them you probably never even clicked before in your life. So every product is similar to that. So if I jump into Fusion 360, so when you open up Fusion 360, this is the screen that you're greeted with. Again, we can see that we have 
nowhere near as many functions as AutoCAD uh, shows us uh, by looking at first glance. Obviously, when you dig down, there is a huge amount of features in Fusion 360, but Fusion is trying to keep this very user friendly and very basic. So you can see by our ribbon here, we're in the solid environment. Then we've got a surfacing, we've got mesh, sheet metal, plastic utilities, all within these have many different options as well. We have the surface, see we can have loads of different areas. So there is a huge amount of uh, functions within Fusion, but again, it's just tidied them all up uh, to show just in the ribbon. So again, like uh, AutoCAD, where most users only use 10 to 15% of the functions, Fusion will be similar enough to that as well. So again, we will be staying in the solid environment and 90% of the users uh, will stay in the solid environment. Again, these other ribbons uh, will not be used a huge amount of time, uh, depending on, on the industry you're in as well, I suppose. So solid is the main one that most users will be using. And inside here, then we have a few um, shortcuts. So these are the most commonly used um, functions that are on the ribbon. These are shortcuts straight into the function. And then inside that, then we've got all our other different functions that we can use Again, you can recreate how this ribbon up here looks like that. If I didn't use the circular pattern a huge amount, I can actually drag this and I can move it around my ribbon wherever I want, or I can actually delete it away from my ribbon and then I can come down here and find it again and I can actually hit it to the toolbar. So it's very easy to customize your own toolbar. So like that when I train people on Fusion 360, I kind of tell them to use it for a few weeks take note of all the functions that they're using a lot and then create the ribbon toolbar to suit them so they're not having to dig down and look for certain functions inside here. So that's the first thing to note is AutoCAD, you all use 15% of the functions, the other 85% you probably never touched in your life or you touch it very rarely, same as Fusion. Fusion, we're going to stay in the solid. This is where we're going to use most of our features. So if I come back to AutoCAD again. So like that in AutoCAD, we all know how to draw. We're all going to be drawing lines and squares and circles using all of these different functions up here. So you got your line, polyline, circles, different types of rectangles, etc. By jumping to Fusion. So how do we go about creating inside of Fusion? So what I'm actually going to do to make this easier is I'm going to draw that dresser that you see in AutoCAD, and I'm going to draw that within Fusion 360 and show you how simple this is to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my screen a little bit smaller. And hopefully you can all see that. So I've whatever 60% of my screen, Fusion, and the other, um, 40%, less than 40%, but anyway, uh, of all the head, just so you can kind of see where I'm getting all of these dimensions from. So before I move on, actually, I'm just going to run a very quick poll here, because I kind of want to get a, an idea of um, of uh, who's or what software people are using currently. So if you can all just uh, answer that little poll there. Just give this a couple of seconds for everyone to show an answer. In. Just give it another 15 seconds. Nearly everybody, a few people still waiting on to vote. Couple more seconds now. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. And what I can do is I can actually share that with you to see who's using what currently. So you can see, yeah, what I was hoping everyone is on AutoCAD. We have a few people with other or no software. Um couple inventor, a couple of SolidWorks users. Okay, so happy out with that. And what I'll do is I'm just going to launch one more poll here and then we move back to the live demo again. Okay, I'll just give that a few seconds for everyone to answer that.
Just give that another couple of seconds. We're at 80%, just wait a couple more to vote, and then I'll close this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close this and I'll share that with you too. Have a look at the answers of that one. So again, precise modeling of 2D and 3D objects and prepare models for CNC machining. Awesome. So I'm going to jump back into our uh, presentation here. So again, um, if you do, because I do know the go to webinar uh, that you've all joined on this, sometimes has a little uh, dialogue box that can kind of cover a portion of your screen. So if you want, you can drag that dialogue box onto, if you have a second monitor set up, you can do it that way. Or there's a little red arrow that points right. If you click on that, it should hide that dialogue box for you. So uh, there's two options. Just as I said, I know that the dialogue box gets in people's way. And I know that I'm trying to share 30% of an AutoCAD uh, software and 70 percent of fusion so it's good for you to have the full screen to be able to see exactly where i get all of these dimensions etc from cool so um so we want to draw up this dresser over here in fusion 360 so if i come over here the very first thing we want to do in fusion 360 as i said the minute you open up fusion 360 this is the actual screen you get you know yourselves when you open up autocad you get a screen it's kind of like a welcome screen what do you want to do do you want to open up a recent file or do you want to open up an, uh, a new template or a kind of it's a menu while fusion doesn't have a menu it just brings you straight into an environment ready for you to start drawing straight away so the first thing we want to do is how do we know well if we're drawn in inches or millimeters or centimeters etc with document settings up here so we can come over here we can look at our document settings we're in millimeters if i need to change that I can change that at this point. So I'm going to leave it at millimeters. So let's start drawing this. So I, the easiest way for me to draw this is maybe draw the 1,000 by 400, and then it's going to be 3 mil or 300 mil high. So I want to draw basically the main body of this dresser. So it's 1,000 by 400 by 300. So if we follow the little workflow that Fusion has laid out for us. And the workflow with Infusion is uh, sketch, turn that sketch into 3D, sketch 3D, sketch 3, sketch 3. That is all you need to remember about how Fusion or any of these uh, Inventor SolidWorks uh, programs work. It's sketch 3D, sketch 3. So we want to start off with a sketch. So if we come up here, we can see, and then again, Fusion is really, really helpful. The minute you hover over any icon in Fusion, it gives you a nice little synopsis of what that function will do. We drop down here, again, we can see derive, extrude, revolve, new component, etc. So we want to create a sketch. So if I create a sketch, now we can see the minute we, so it's still highlighted, we haven't we haven't at, or told Fusion why we want to create a sketch yet. So you can see here that it shows up these three little panels. So basically this is the front, this is the side, and this is your plan. So we, we're basically drawing, where do we want to draw this dresser? And like I said, I'm going to draw the body of this dresser, the main body. So I'm going to just draw it on the, the plan because I'm going to draw 1000 by 400. And again, drawing on the different planes, it, it's, there's good practice and then you can just draw it wherever you want at the end of the day. If this confuses you, it doesn't really matter because you can still rotate your whole model around and get it set up correctly if you need, need to be. So I'm going to draw this correctly. So I'm going to draw it on the plan uh, plane here. So drawing on a plane again, just to hash over that again. If I draw here, it's like you're drawing on the front of a house. If I draw over here, it's like I'm drawing on the left hand side of the house. If I'm drawing down here, it's like drawing on the floor of, of a house. So I'm going to draw on the floor. So I'm going to select that. And that brings me into a 2D environment. So you can see up here now, it's kind of changed into what all it kind of looks like with your lines, and circles, and rectangles, etc. You've got your different modified tools again, exact same as AutoCAD, where we have chamfers, trims, offset, fillets. So I'm going to draw 
a rectangle. So I'm going to go center rectangle. It's easy for me to do this. Turn off the 3D sketch for there. Let's do that again. So I'm going to go sketch on the plan, bring me into the 3D environment, and I'm going to go center rectangle. So as soon as I selected that, it's looking for me to say, well, where do you want to start this? So I'm going to use the center point. So zero, zero, and I'm going to just drag out. As soon as I drag out, you can see over here in the 90 on the left hand side of that rectangle, it's telling me that it's 85 or it's 87 or whatever. So I can actually put figures in at this point. So I know by looking at my all that I've drawn that this is going to be 400. So I type 400. Let's zoom out a bit. That's 400. See the 400 is locked in. So if I press the tab key, I can come over to the other dimension and I can put in a thousand. And there we have. 400 by 1000. So again, that's very simple to do. So again, if I just delete all of that and I'll just redo that, I could do it a different way. I can do center rectangle, snap to zero, just drop that anywhere. So now I've just dropped a rectangle, but there's no dimensions, meaning I can pull this out or I can make it smaller because there's no dimensions. Whenever you see blue lines in Fusion 360, that means them lines are not constrained. And the whole idea of sketches is we, we constrain everything between using constraints or using dimensions. So up here, or down in our dialog box, we can see sketch dimension, and there's also a shortcut key called D. So I can just press D on the keyboard, that'll bring me into that. Again, you can create shortcut keys for all of these. If you notice, there's three little dots up here. We can create shortcut keyboard uh, keys for every single function of Fusion 360. So if I go sketch dimension, and I select this line, and I go 1000, and then I select this line, and I go, 400. There we have our 400 by 1000 at any point I can come along. And I can double tick that and go, actually, that was meant to be 900, etc. So it's very easy to modify and update your drawings. <clears throat> so I'm not going to draw any, anything else on this. So that's my 1000. Let just zoom in over here. There's 1000 by 400, which we've drawn. I'm happy enough with that. I'm going to go finish sketch. So I'm complete. I'm done. I'm happy. I've finished sketch. A view cube over here in the corner, and you'll see this in all the software. So if you have AutoCAD 3D, you'll notice there's view cube also. The view cube is to be able to rotate around to the different, to the back, to the front, to the left, to the right, to the bottom, to the top, and just orbiting around. So if you press the little house here, it does a nice little isometric view. So if I click on that, it brings me into a little isometric view. So the second step I want to do is create that into 3D. If you remember, the workflow is sketch 3d sketch 3d so there's different ways we can create 3d extrude revolve sweep lock the remain ones extrude is probably used 90 percent of the time revolve the other eight percent and the other two here maybe two percent so if we look at the the way fusion is set us up extrude is actually the very second icon so the first icon was we create a sketch the second icon is extrude so if i click extrude the little dialog box appears but Fusion is smart enough to already select this profile. If it's select the wrong profile, I can deselect it, and I can come down and reselect it. It shows a little arrow here that is very useful. I can drag that arrow up or down to go, well, which way do I want to draw this dresser? So I can put in my distance here, 300, and OK that. So there we have, just to show you where I got the 300 from, over here. So it's 300 high. So now we've created a thousand by four hundred by three hundred by high. So the next thing I want to do is maybe draw the legs of this. So where do I want to draw the legs? Obviously underneath the dresser. So again, I can use my orbit too, and I can lock under. I can drag that, that by left clicking on this. I can do that or shortcut keys again by using shift button and the middle mouse button, and I can orbit underneath this. And now we can see this face, which is the base of it. Of the dresser again sketch 3d sketch 3d sketch 3d so i'm just going to create a new sketch and now i'm going to sketch on the base of this uh dresser so now i'm looking i'm sketching on the base of it i'm going to draw a little circle here and the circle is 60 mil again where did i get 60 mil if i come over here you can see that the, the leg diameter here is 60. so i'm going to draw that in we can see it's blue meaning it's not constrained, meaning I can move this all over the screen. So we need to lock that in position. So if we come back over here, you can see that it's 15 and 50. So it's in 15 of 50. So if I go to center dash, 
the side this is 50 and the center this to the gear again is 50 and there we can see it's black meaning it's fully constrained meaning i can't actually move this anymore so to say sketch i can update these at a stage again fusion and i'm not going to go too deep into this but if we wanted to make fusion very smart what we can do is double click on this dimension to change it and i'm going to just select this dimension and press enter now we can see that this dimension is reading this so if i update this to 100 it'll also update this to 100 so we can make our models very smart so i'm going to draw a second leg down here and the other way what we can do this so again i can i can stick a dimension on this and call it 60 or i can stick a dimension on this and aim it at this or we can use our constraints so using constraints here loads of different constraints and you'll only end up using the same three or four each time so equal is a good one so I want this to be equal to this so now you can see it's the same size it's always going to be the same size if i change this to 100 this will change to 100. i'm going to use another constraint called the horizontal vertical so i want to select the center of this to the center of this so now you can see that this is vertical with this so if i go to move this I can move it up and down, but I can't move it left and right because it's constrained to be in line with this. So I'm going to stick one more dimension from here to here, and that will also be 50. Or I can just step one of these up here to make sure it's reading the same 50 there as well. So now we can see it's black. If I come over here, I'm going to draw another circle here, and another circle here. I'm going to go to my constraints, go equal. This guy is going to be equal to this, and this one can be equal to this. So now they're all equal. I'm going to use my vertical horizontal constraint again from here to here, from here to here, and then from this guy to this guy. And I'm using constraints here, but we can easily just dimension 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 all the way around here. If you were a little bit nervous to use constraints, but constraints are just very easy for us to use. So there we have 50. I can actually update this to this one over here. So now if I do decide to change this to 75, you can see everything moves in 75. If I change this to 80, you can see all the circles become 80 as well. So it's very smart um, model we're creating here. Just go back to 50s and again, I'm going to finish sketch. I'm going to click on my little isometric view and there we have um, our sketch created. If I go and look underneath this again, exact same thing again, I'm going to go for an extrude. So this time it didn't select any profiles because there's loads of different profiles that we can choose now. So I want to choose the circle here and this circle and this circle and this circle. So it's five, five circles or four circles. But I can drag that arrow, arrow down. If I come over here and see what we're looking at. So it's 500 mil. So again, I can go up distance, 500 and okay that. So there we have our locker legs created so that yeah the legs don't look nice and tapered like this one over here so if i wanted to make a little edit to these legs you can see down here in our timeline we've created a sketch then we did an extrude then i created another sketch and i created another extrude so at any stage i can actually go back like go back to my very very first sketch and edit this and go actually that one's to be 2000 mil long and you can see now it updates the model to be 2000. The legs all stayed in position because of the way we modeled them up using the edges. If I go back here and edit the sketch, let me go back and change this guy. So 1000, finish sketch. I can come in here and extrude and edit the feature of the extrude. If I wanted to change the body height from 300 to 500, I could do it like that. I can come in here, I can edit the sketch of my legs if I wanted to change. 50 or the 60 mil diameter or if i want to change the legs distance as well so there's my distance so there is a taper angle here that i can use so if i go 1.5 and they don't look fresh so it's the other way i want to go so minus 1.5 and there we have our legs nice and tapered just like our little model over here so the next thing we look at is we want to put in um these shelves so again, where do I want to put the shelves? I want to put them in the front of the locker. So it's going to be this face here. So I'm going to go create sketch on the front of my locker here. And let's zoom in a bit. I'm going to create a two-point rectangle. 
can just draw in a random two point rectangle. I'm going to dimension this guy up, so that is 470 by 130. So I can move this around, so you can see it moves wherever I want it. So now we have to lock it into position somehow. So I'm going to go dimension. I can see this line to this line is 20. And this line to this line is also 20. Now we can see it's fully constrained. Uh, at the same time, I can come up here and do another rectangle and draw a random rectangle. It's very much so that's 10. Dimension of this guy is 150. Put it over here on the right hand side. And distance from here to the bottom of the locker is 20. And it's 20 here. So, so instead of sticking another 20 there, I can use another constraint called collinear. I want this line to be collinear with this line. And there we go. I'm going to draw the circle in. Another dimension that circle. That circle is radius 35, so it's a centimeter of diameter. Distance from the center of that circle is 100. And distance from the circle to the edge here is 230. Got that 230 from over here. And again, you can see it's fully uh, constrained. So again, I could draw all of that over there, but like what you do in AutoCAD is you would mirror the whole lot over. So I need a mirror line. So I'm going to create a line. I'm going to snap, and you can see I can snap to all these edges. And you can see as soon as you run the mouse along an edge, you can find the midpoints. There's a midpoint. So if I come over here, midpoint there to there. So because that's uh, a line, it sees it's after breaking the body up into two. So if I select that line, and I can come over here and change that line type to construction, now you can see it's still the one body because now it's a construction line. It's not an actual line that we need. So using that construction line, we can mirror that across. So I'm going to go mirror. I'm going to double all of that, all of that, and that. So there's nine objects selected. I'm going to mirror line. Use the mirror line as this. And there we have a preview of what's going to happen. And there we have fully constrained. So I'm going to go finish sketch. Go to my little isometric view. Again, I'm going to go extrude, and I'm going to step to that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, and that guy. If I pull the arrow this way, you can see it's adding material on, which is definitely what we want to do. If I go backwards, you can see it goes red, meaning it's going to cut. And you can see the operation here is cut. If I pull it the other way, you can see it's joining it. If I go back this way, and we know it's 300 or 400 here, you can see distance back is 380 so i can go and you can see it's a minus value so i'm going to go minus 380 and okay that and there we have that cut out you can see we have the back still in it so what's next to be done so let's go for this little arch here again i'm going to create another sketch i'm going to go cutting on the front of this or the sketches on the front of this again create we can go for a three point arc Random arc here for now, still a random arc. So the radius of this arc is 400. Distance from this point to the side of the arc is 200. And then this is the way there is also 200. Sorry, just make dimensions of it. Again, I can double click this 200 and put that in. And now it's reading off that. So if I change this to 220, the other one will be 220 also. Okay, so we can see we have a black uh, line, meaning it's fully constrained. I'm going to finish sketch, go for isometric again, extrude again. I'm going to cut this guy. I'm going to cut all the way across here. And I can actually select the back face of this to cut as far as, or I can just change this to all, extend type to all, and cut. Okay. And there we have a little cut out complete. So the last thing that's left on this dresser is we have a table top. You can see it's 450 by 1050. So it's 
25 mil uh, all the way around. So if I create a sketch on the top of my lock now, and if I just use the offset tool, I can actually offset this line. And if I pull this out, I can go 25 mil. Okay, that's fully constrained. I'm going to go finish sketch, extrude, and I'm going to extrude this. But if I extrude that only, you can see what that's going to do. That's not what I want. So I want the inside of it up as well. And that is going to be 20 mil. Okay, and okay, that. So there we have our locker created very, very easily by just using sketches and extrudes. And a lot of the time it is just sketches and extrudes. As I said, we use Revolve quite a bit as well, uh, but extrude would be the most commonly one used. If you're doing a lot of parts that need to be turned, etc., uh, Revolve is quite useful. Uh, but again, it's very easy to use that. After that, we can come along and create this. So if we did want to create a 2D drawn for um, this model, we can go from our design environment and we can come down here to our drawn environment and go from design. I need to save this first. Let's call this test or whatever there. Save that. And when I when it's looking for a drawn, I'm gonna select the template. So you can create your own company templates, obviously, in all the different sizes. So I'm gonna use the symmetry template here. Brings us straight in here. We can see our locker is shown up here in the front. We can change which way we want to look at this. So I'm going to just leave this in front for now. I'm going to change my scale, make it a bit bigger. And I'm going to just drop that here and open that. So there we have a locker created. I can come up here and project that view then. So if I wanted to project looking down, I can go that way. If I want to go from the side, I can go that way. If I wanted a nice symmetric view, we can go to the four corners. So looking at the four corners kind of gives us which is the best angle. So it's this one over here I want. I can move this view by just dragging it, drop it up here. I can double click into this view. I can actually say I want that one to be shaded. I can come along here then and start sticking dimensions all over this job. When we have our dimensions drawn, so I'm just going to save that as is for now. The beauty of this then is if I do go back here and I decide actually that tabletop I want to be um, not 25, I want that to be maybe 50 mil. That'll update that. And if I save, okay, go into my drawn, we'll notice our drawn is showing this little uh, reference saying that this drawn is actually out of date to the model. <coughs> You can see here it's 1050 and 450. If I just click on that, it updates it and now it's 500 by 1100. So it automatically updates your drawings as well. Obviously, the amount of dimensions, you may have to re reference some dimensions depending on what they are. But for a lot of them, it will automatically update very easily like that. Inside in this drawn environment, we have the option to do section views, detail views, we can do center lines, we can do center marks, we can do ordinate dimensions we can add text in we can do tables so if we want to drop the table in we can do that and it gives us a part list if we wanted to export this out we can export it out as a pdf we can export it out as a dwg exf which is going to be very handy for if you are doing some laser plasma cutting or if you're sending off drawings to customers for quotes etc we can do all of that from here as well <coughs> Um, and like that, this drawn over here, I actually exported it out and opened up now. Okay, so this is what we're getting over here. <clears throat> we can also do the same workflow. So if you did have something drawn up in AutoCAD, and we want to insert a DXF, select the plane. So just pick the front plane here for now. And let's go, there's dresser again. And there's our DXF showing up in Fusion, we can change what type of unit. So a DXF will come in unitless into Fusion 360. So we will have to just scale it up depending. So if I just tilt that like that, I can do an extrude. Actually drag that guy, pull him out, and there we have our locker done. Quickly that way also. Um, but you can use them sketches. Every sketch that is there, you can simply turn that back on. You can use that sketch for other areas as well. Using fusion. So if I open up the data panel, we look at other things you can do. 
Fusion. So we have an assembly here that I've created. So this is the overall assembly. So we've loads of different components. We have our bench actually added in drawers. I've got movement onto these drawers as well. So we can do that. We can do rotates as well. When we have the assembly complete, we can open from this guy, maybe. I need to go full screen on this. So again, we can create these types of assembly drawings from that in future as well. We have our parts list here where we have small drawers with two of them, with four legs, with four knobs, two large drawers with one main body. How it goes together, again, we can do all of this type of, uh, we have the environment to be able to do this within Fusion 360 also. If I open up um, Bird Box, just trying to show you a couple of different workflows that now that you've seen how we can draw from 2D to 3D very easily, I just want to show you a couple of other workflows that we can do in Fusion 360. You can see here we have a badly designed Bird Box. I've just created a sketch with empty box. And if I wanted to, I can rearrange this because I've drawn it as a component. And I want to drop that onto the sheet. And there we have the bird box dropped on. And you can see how we can create that. We can export this out as a DXF like this. And then we can throw it up on our laser cutters and cut this out very easily. Um, but let me see. We have the option to insert. So if you did have nuts and bolts, we have a massive a library here with millions of components from McMaster Care, whether it's nuts, bolts, washers, clamps, etc., which have models already created inside of this that we can import straight in here uh, into Fusion 360. So if I pick a, a new screen for now, that one. This guy, solid rock, set file. Get rid of him. Okay, that. There's the screw that came in. And then there's our screw. So if you want to just copy, paste, drop another screw in, very simple, like that. So again, we have that library with McMaster Care. We have manufacturing parts so like that. If you're using the aluminium profiles, we've got tricep parts. So again, millions of different components that have mods already created that are very easily imported into Fusion 360, just like we've seen with the McMaster car. Um, and so this is just another mock-up of something that I was messing with in Fusion 360. So we can build up, and like that, you can see the timeline down here between sketches, extrudes, and the shell, extrude, extrude, but you can see the workflow. It's very similar. So we start, I can actually go to the very start of this timeline. Like press play and we can see how this was designed, which is a very nice feature of Fusion 360 as well. So you can see a lot of different sketches and extrudes that are happening. Creating different components. You can add all appearances, you can add materials of everything inside of Fusion 360 as well. So you can put a glass appearance on them with the bottles of the shelves. Try to create an open, it won't have grayish. Don't know what they were. Get a microwave. Updating the copper. And that is it, job done. But again, you can see how it was created in Fusion 360. I can go all the way back to the very start of my timeline and I can re edit anything. Go all the way back to the start, edit the sketch, I'll probably break it now, but let's try it. 1000, like that. And there we have a longer room. So again, it's just kind of nice to be able to, be able to do all of this like work in Fusion 360. And I think I actually finished a little early. Maybe I went too fast here today. I thought it would take a full hour. Uh, there's 20 minutes left. Um, I'm up for taking questions. If anyone has any questions, take questions. 
Um, I don't, as I said, I could show you a huge amount more on Fusion 360, but the fact that this webinar is called uh, Going from 2D to 3D, I don't want to confuse people. I think what we did in our first uh, part here is a great example of how easy it is to go from 2D into 3D by just creating simple sketches and then just extrude it. So you're doing it the same what you did in Fusion 360 by creating sketches, but you just don't ever, ever end up making them into 3D. So you're doing the same purpose. You're making a, a 2D drawn, and then you're just going to extrude that 2D drawn, and then you're going to put another sketch on the side of that 2D drawn, or on the top, or on the bottom, or an edge, etc. Um, if I did want to tie this guy up, I can go in here and chamfer. Let's chamfer all of these edges. Don't want them sharp. Let's put in five mil chamfer. And here we have chamfer created. And put another chamfer on these edges. Rotate around. Five mil there. We want to shorten the legs. Let's just say that this wasn't a locker. We look for the legs and it's true for the feature and we go with 50 mil. And just say this is a TV stand. Every TV stand needs holes for cables. So I'm going to look for an on one of my old sketches. There's a sketch you can see. I can use these sketches. So now that I've turned on sketch four, what that allows me to do is I can create a circle. I'm going to create a little circle here of 20. And you can see I can actually grab the center of the other circle on the other sketch. I can start drawing these circles in. I go for construction line. Again, construction line. Another construction line. And one more. Draw so insert. Look for the midpoint. There's the midpoint. Sketch and then go extrude this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this way. I'm going to put this thing on. Okay, that. I'm not going to sketch it. And there we have a couple of holes created for cables. Right, I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to go into any more detail on this. So, again, you can import your DXFs into Fusion 360 or you can export your. Fusion 360 jobs and export them out. It's uh, DXFs or DWGs. I'm going to go for one more poll. Uh, I do see a few questions coming in. Uh, let me do the questions first before we do the poll. So, so we have the first question, loads of questions coming in. Can you show again how you placed all the 3D solid components on a sheet for export? Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, will this webinar be available to watch afterwards? So yeah, we are recording it. Can we import a 2D stairs drawing into Fusion 360 and develop a 3D model? Uh, I can certainly try. Uh, definitely, if you want, send me an email uh, after this webinar. We can have a look at that workflow and see what we can do. Uh, I'm always up for a challenge. Can we import a 2D? No, oh, I just read that one. Um, do we have any sheet metal examples taking a 2D DXF part to 3D folded model? There is a sheet metal environment in Fusion 360. I can kind of show you a glimpse of the Fusion Tree or the sheet metal area. Again, drop me an email. I can set you up with uh, Sid would be our sheet metal expert. And he can show you some sheet metal. We can do a little demo on sheet metal environment in Fusion 360 if needs be. Uh, but I can just show you a glimpse of it today. Can we draw curved stairs in Fusion 360 and export out to AutoCAD or AlphaCAD? 
Can we draw curved stairs infusion from exporters out? Again, I probably need a call on that one to figure out. I do have a, an example of the stairs I drew. I'm quite proud of. I can see if I can find it. Yes. So this was drawn up in Fusion 360. Uh, again, if we were to look at the workflow on this guy, going back. So you'd start off with a curved surface and I'd flatten it and then I'd do everything in flattened state and then recurve uh, recurve it or bend it. Or that. And we came up with this. So again, we can draw a spiral stairs. Is that curved? Okay, so let me go back to the very first question. So can you show how we place 3D modes in a sheet for export? Okay, that was the bird box. So I want to do stages here. So we have a bird box created. How we created this is I created this in all uh, the components. So in Fusion 360, if you create a model, so if I go back to the lock, I would say, this was all created using just uh, one component. So you can see the top level here is a component. You can see bodies. It's just one full one full body. So if we did want to separate this up a little bit, uh, I could have drawn it in multiple components, and that were, that's where you see when the drop down new component. So what I do is I draw a new component and I just draw the main body. Then I draw a new component and I draw the, the top of the table. I just draw a new component and draw the leg and then et cetera, et cetera, because they're all separate components. So because of this demo, I wanted to keep it very simple. I just drew it all as one body. I can separate all of these uh, and create them as new components if needs be. So I just show that a little bit. So I'm going to split body and I'll split this body and I'm going to have my split in right underneath here. Base that. So there we go. We split that. So now you can see I've actually got two bodies. And again, I can just do that to catch that split in bodies. If I right click, click this body, I can create the components. Now we've got the component. And I right click this and I create that and into components. Now we've got two separate components. So you can see two separate components. They come apart. We can stick joints on them to make sure that they don't come apart. We can put loads of different joints on them. Again, very simple. We can create. And uh, let's say I want to do just for the crack revolution around that guy, and then we have this. this I've got on this guy, capture position, and now you can see I can spin this around. Obviously, we're not going to do that spinning. Just wanted to show you something that's because we can just like the rigid uh, joint is what you'd use there, but you can't do any motion at a rigid joint, it's just like you've super glued it in position. So if I go back to the bird box. Bird box. Here we are. So again, we've created this in multiple components. You can see the front, we can see the side, the bottom, the roof, the other roof, the dowels, the left side, back, etc. Multiple components we've drawn this. So now that we've created multiple components, I just created a, a sketch. You can see there's my sketch. I can mess around with that sketch. Because I've it turned on, I can actually edit this. And this is the fear of if things aren't constrained, it's very easy for someone to come in and move that point one without you even realizing it was ever moved. So that's why you've constrained something. So if I come into modify and I go down to my arrange feature here, if I go arrange, I want to draw, I want to put that in, I'm going to go arrange all of this guy. So there, these are all the objects. If it was something I didn't want, I can undo my zero here. Do so I don't want to do that's not flat. I can come into my envelope and I can select this right here. And that will update that like that. And there we have that complete. What we can do then is we can just reach export it into design. Actually, probably an easy way to do it. But yeah, let's go for the drawn. We create a drawn. And then when we're finished our drawn, we just we can export it out. So let's go for it. Save dash design drawn. Uh, okay. Um, one is to ten. Good math. We'll take this. And what we can do then is export out as a DXF. So and open the DXF in AutoCAD. That's how you go about that. 
again if we did come back to the bird box and we needed a certain gap in between here to edit our range. Pretty sure we have the uh, frame width, so if you want to go frame width 20, everything has to be in 20 mils. So you can see everything's pushed in by 20 mils, and you want the gap between all these objects to be as tight as possible or as big as possible. So let's look 20 again. Now you can see a 20 mil gap between all of these. The nice thing about that is we can rearrange this so let's go, let's go that way, squeeze it up, then it tells me it's not, it doesn't fit. So then let's go this way. The sheet is tight like that. You can mess around with the sketch because it's unconstrained and easily modified. You can see the most things like that. <laughs> right. Next question. Okay, the webinar. Yeah, we are videoing it. So Orla will uh, send on the file to yourselves. Again, if you want to just drop us an email. Uh, can we export import a 2D draw into Fusion? As I said, James, if you want, give me a shout on that afterwards and we can look at that. Sheet metal. Okay, so the sheet metal environment. So again, we stayed in solid here. I did say 90% of the time we're going to be staying in solid, but um, <clears throat> this time we are jumping into sheet metal. So again, we, loads of customers do use the sheet metal environment a huge amount as well. So inside the sheet metal, we can see again, create a, a, a sketch. So if I create a sketch, I'm just going to pick it in, in here. I'm just going to do something very, very basic. In the sheet metal, we've sheet metal rules, so we can create our own rules. So I've just a few examples: aluminium, three mil, four mil. Inside here, then you have obviously the K factor thickness, bend conditions, current conditions. Again, it goes all over my head all of this. Uh, so you can create your own uh, material anyway. It's amazing to note. When I've just created, I can stick my let's go aluminium three mil. So there we have aluminium three mil, and that is just basically flattened. If I want it, I can flange up these three edges here. We can drag this up here like this. And now we're starting to create our sheet metal um, bends. So when everything is nicely shaped and designed, and we want to do our flat pattern, we can come up here and create a flat pattern on this guy. And there we have our flat pattern created. And you can see the actual bend line, the tangent lines, where the bend starts, where the bend ends, etc. My extent of knowledge of sheet metal doesn't go much further than this, to be honest. As I said, Sid is your man. I can put you in touch with Sid if you want um, a little more of an insight onto this. So just one second there, we have another, we have another question coming in. I've answered all the questions. Yeah, I think that's everything. So I'm just going to run one more poll before we finish up here today. And again, very simple uh, poll to answer. So just give that a few seconds. I'd like that if you answer yes to this, we can reach out to you and we can uh, see what 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 you're looking for, what how we can help you. Give me another few minutes. So hopefully uh, this webinar was beneficial for you. Uh, hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully you're looking to move from AutoCAD into Fusion 360. And as I said, I'm the, the guy to talk to if you're looking for training or if you're looking for more advice or if you want more information on this, um, I'd be the guy to come shout at. Perfect. So I'm going to close that poll there now. And perfect. So I'm just going to go back to our presentation here. So again, we do have a, a deal on at the moment. Um, so if you do purchase Fusion 360 before the 20th of October, we can do a free two hour introduction tutorial into Fusion 360. Um, so again, it's it's a, a really nice uh, added bonus because the, the, the Fusion Essentials training, it's 10 hours. So basically you're getting two hours that are going to be 
uh, getting you up and going um, into Fusion 360. The cost of Fusion 360 is not expensive at all compared to other 3D softwares. Um, so it's definitely worth looking into. I think it's, I'm not the sales guy, but I think it's in and around the 500 mark. Um, won't be far off that, plus or minus, whatever. Um, we do have a manufacturing event coming up in November. So again, there's a QR code there to scan if you want to uh, look into this a bit further, if you want to add it to your calendars, or if you want to um, register and be uh, a member at this. We're going to have talks from different customers of ours um, on how they're using the different products and how the products are benefic benefiting their company or process currently. So I'll just leave that up for a couple more seconds. Okay, and yeah, if you have any other questions or queries, you can contact myself. Uh, my email address is there. Uh, Jackie Ryan is our sales um, for MFG and all things huge also. So again, you can reach out to Jackie if you're looking for prices or quotes, whether it's training or purchasing. Um, but any can, anything technical, you can reach out to myself. And... I think that is the end of the webinar. So as I said, look, that we came right on the hour. So maybe I'll get to finish 20 minutes early. Um, I appreciate all the questions that did come in, good, good questions. And as I said, if you want to follow up, again, just drop me an email. We can have a quick chat on the phone or we can do a quick Teams call for Sheet Metal. I can put you in touch with Sid. Um, so yeah, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers, bye now, bye-bye.